hey welcome to part uh, the simple version in this version we're gonna be taking more of a learning from example approach as in we'll find a game genie code that we'll want to make I'll go through step by step my process of making it and then come up with our final code now let's start with what you'll need first you'll need an NES emulator I suggest using FCEUX like I strongly suggest you should use FCEUX when it comes to making game genie codes Emulators like BizHawk and Nestopia don't even come close to having the amount of tools FCUX has. Long story short, just get it. Until then, I'll meet you in the emulator. Here we are on the internet. Now, using your search engine of choice, illegally download a ROM of Super Mario Bros. Next, using FCUX, go ahead and open the ROM and make sure it's not E because they didn't have Game Genie in Europe. Now that you have the game open, go ahead and go to the debug menu and open two things. The hex editor, and the debugger. I'll tell you what those are for in a minute. For now, let's go back to the internet and get some resources. Well, there's this one website I used, at crystal.romhacking.net, that have these things called RAM maps. It's basically just a list of all the variables that the game has to keep track of. Taking the example of Super Mario Brothers, over on the left we have the address where each value is stored, and over here on the right we have what each value stored in that specific address means. Take address 0003 as an example. It keeps track of the player's direction. If the value stored at 0003 is 1, then the player is facing right, but if the value is 2, then the player is facing left. If we look back at the hex editor, while keeping the game in a little window, we can see exactly this. All of these hexadecimal values that are constantly changing are what makes up the random access memory. And if you scroll down to around address 8000 on the hex editor, then you'll find the read-only memory, which are basically instructions for when and how the RAM changes. The ROM tells the RAM what to do, the RAM tells the game what to do. So now you may be thinking, that's how the Game Genie does its thing. It screws around with the value in RAM, but it actually modifies the ROM. When you first think about it, that may seem kind of weird, but it actually makes sense. Let's take a RAM address that has more than two possible values as an example. Uh, let's see, how about RAM address 000E? This RAM address has 12 different possible values. So if you were to use a Game Genie code on the RAM, then that value couldn't be changed your whole play session. And you could see how that can cause some inaccurate results. So the Game Genie modifies the ROM directly, i.e. the instructions. Now for the rest of this video I could just explain how everything works, but I feel it's better to learn from example. Let's start with one of the simplest codes we could possibly make. There are three sources you can use in order to make a Game Genie code. A RAM map of the ROM, a disassembly of the ROM, or through masterful use of the RAM search. At one point in the video I'll be doing all three of these methods. But for the infinite lives code, let's resort to using the RAM map. Now that we're at the RAM map, let's find the RAM address that has to do with the player's lives. It's a good thing we have control F. So it looks like the RAM address that keeps track of the player's lives is 075A. Now going back to our emulator to the hex editor, we're going to try to find 075A. The hex editor is laid out in rows with 16 addresses in each row. So 0750 would be over here, 0751 will be over here, 0752 will be over here, etc. Now since it's all hexadecimal, it counts up like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Instead of having 10 possible different digits in a place, hexadecimal has 16. Which means that the highest two digit number you can notate is 255. So 075A, the address we're looking for, would be over here. Wait, why say 2? Mario only has 3 lives! When the value is 2, Mario has 3 lives. When the value is 1, Mario has 2 lives. And when the value is 0, Mario has 1 life. That's it. Going back to the emulator, if you open up the hex editor and put the game window in a small tab, making sure that 075A is still in view, you may notice something. When you die while playing through the game, the number decreases. Now we know for sure that's the address in charge of lives. Now we're going to go ahead and right click on address 075A and then click add right breakpoint for address 075A. Doing this will automatically open up the debugger. Over in the corner you can see it's added as a right breakpoint, which means that every time the address 075A is overwritten by a piece of code in the ROM, then the emulation will pause and the code responsible for the overwrite will be displayed at the top. 
Over here is the location of the ROM address, which seems to be address 91D9. And over here is the code that's actually affecting the RAM address. In this case, the RAM address is 075A. So if we go to address 91D9, keeping in mind that the ROM starts at 8000, then we should expect to see this. CE 5A07. Now the 5A07 part is definitely referring to the RAM address 075A, but the CE is what's known as an opcode. More specifically, the decrease opcode. So the hexadecimal code corresponds to the non-hexadecimal code to the right of it. 5A07 is 075A, and CE is decrease. Let's go back to the internet. Here at 6502.org, we have a list of all the opcodes and all their respective hexadecimal values. Now let's go ahead and click on the decrease. Okay, so here we are at decrease. Well, I guess it's called decrement memory, but whatever. And would you look at that? CE is one of the four possible hex values for decrease. More specifically, the absolute decrease value. Absolute is one of many addressing modes for opcodes. The addressing mode, in the simplest terms, is how the processor interprets the opcode, so to speak. Let's take the example of good old DEC. Absolute will make DEC affect a four-digit RAM address. In this case, the RAM address is none other than 075A. So the code for decrement 075A would be CE5A07. And what do you know, that's exactly what the code is. And if we scroll down to 91D9, the code I just mentioned starts right at 91D9 and continues on 91DA, continues on 91DB. Each hexadecimal value takes a ROM address. Important disclaimer, I will be going over all the opcodes and all the addressing modes in my complex tutorial. Now that complex tutorial should be released within the span of like 30 days after this one. I haven't really decided yet, but it should be coming soon. For now, I'll put some links in the description, but don't worry, it'll be out soon. Now let's get to the good part, actually making the game genie code. But how are we going to make an infinite lives code when all we can change is the target RAM address and the opcode? See, this is the part of the Game Genie code where you have to use your intuition because every Game Genie code you make is going to be different. You just gotta brainstorm ways on how to achieve your desired result. For now, I'll just tell you the answer. It's changing the opcode from decrease to something else. So maybe instead of decreasing, it increases. Or maybe instead of decreasing, it decreases another RAM value. Or maybe instead of decreasing, it does something else completely different that won't screw up the lives. But it can't do nothing. Just make it so that when Mario dies, the counter does not decrease. What the well-known Infinite Lives Game Genie codes usually do is, instead of decreasing, they copy the value from 075A into the accumulator. What's the accumulator? Basically you store stuff in it, and that's going to be in the complex version. So anyway, you store in the accumulator, which is probably going to do nothing, because that accumulator value gets rewritten all the time. So it should be relatively safe to put it in there for like a second. The load accumulator opcode with the absolute addressing mode does exactly that. Copies the value currently in 075A into the accumulator. So let's just do that, store into the accumulator, because it's going to get overwritten anyway. So let's head over to the ROM address 91D9, right click the CE value that we don't want, click create game genie code at this address, and then this window will pop up. And then from here, all we really gotta do is put AD in the value slot. AD being the hex value for the load accumulator absolute addressing mode. And would you look at that? There's our code. 8 digits long. All you gotta do to make it 6 digits long is to delete the compare. But keep in mind, once you delete the compare, the code will have more unintended side effects. And this goes for all 6 digit codes. I won't go into technical detail because most of the time you won't notice these side effects. But just be aware in case of the off chance you do notice them. Let's go test out the code. Go up here to tools, click on cheats. This window should pop up. Now scroll down to find your code and double click to activate. Whether it be the 6 digit or the 8 digit one. Yes, I know they're not digits, but I like to call them digits. Shut up. <laughs> What do you know, our code actually worked. Now let's move on to our second method of code making and our second code. Here we are at our second option of making Game Genie codes. With a comprehensive disassembly made by this wonderful person. Just a, just a great guy. Just a, just a brief, 
Typically, comprehensive disassemblies are relatively uncommon, and they're mostly used for really complex game genie codes. A disassembly like this will typically show the RAM addresses and what they store, as well as the actual game code. Now for the you get sent back to the beginning of the world after you defeat Bowser game genie code, the RAM map won't help us at all. We're gonna have to look at the game code. Now right around here is where I look through all of the disassembly and try to look for the segment of code that I'm looking for. The code we're looking for has to do with some sort of world transitioning or something. Okay, I found a segment called Player End World. And within the Player End World segment, I found a bit of code saying Increment World Number. And as you probably would have guessed by now, that increment world number is responsible for moving on from World 1 to World 2, World 2 to World 3, or whatever. Before we even worry about changing anything, let's find this piece of code in the hex editor. But first, we have to convert this piece of code into hexadecimal. Well, looking through the code, we can find that world number is just the RAM address 075F. So far, we have increment 075F. And the increment is going to be using the absolute addressing mode because we're going to be incrementing a RAM address with more than two digits. If it were to be two digits or less, then we'd be using zero page. So what's the hex for increment absolute addressing mode? It's EE. So our full piece of code is EE075F, but wait! It's actually switched around, remember? So it's actually EE5F07. So now that we know this, let's open up the ROM, go to the hex editor, do the old control F, and type in EE5F07. And since our code was so specific, we should only come up with one result. Now there's many many ways we could change this in order for it to not increment 075F. We could have it increment 075E. We could have it do something else to 075F. What I'm going to be doing is what I did to the last code, loading the address's value into the accumulator. And like I said before, the accumulator is getting overwritten pretty much all the time, so it's safe to keep it in there for just a second. So from here we know the drill. Find load accumulator absolute addressing mode because we are screwing with the four digit opcode. So in our case, that would be AD. Go to the hex editor, right click EE, click create game genie code at this address, and replace EE with AD. It's that simple. Now let's see if it works. We're at the end of the world, and once we get the axe, we should be sent right back to the beginning of the world. Right now we're on 1-4, so we should be sent back to 1-1. One, one. And would you look at that, our Game Genie code actually works. Now before I move on to the next method of code making, I would like to go over another way this code could work. We could keep the increment portion intact and just edit the destination RAM address. For example, if we made a Game Genie code that made 5F into 5E, every time we beat a world, the coin counter would increase by 1. Since the RAM address 075E is for coins. Imagine if Super Mario Bros. was a super obscure title and almost no one knew what the hell it was. So obscure that there's absolutely no RAM maps or disassemblies of the game. There's still a way of making codes and that's through something called the RAM search. The RAM search is probably the least efficient way of code making. But if a game's not very well known, your options are limited. So using the RAM search method, we're only going to be doing a pretty simple code. Making the Starman last shorter. First thing we're gonna have to do, open the game. Next, under Tools, click RAM Search. This window should then pop up, showing a bunch of values changing all in all the time. But since we have so little information, we have to make some assumptions. We have to assume that the Starman is running on a timer, and that the timer is decreasing every once in a while. Now once we get the Starman, quickly pause the game. It's time to screw with the RAM Search. Using this RAM Search, we search for RAM addresses that meet certain conditions. We know that our RAM address should get lower and lower as time goes on. So put the comparison upper to less than, and put compare to slash by previous value. Every time we press search, the RAM search will only search for RAM addresses that have their values lowered every time we press search. So in that case, we should unpause the game and wait for the timer to run down. Once the timer is lowered a bit, press search, and then press search again, and then press search again until we have only a few RAM addresses left. These are the RAM addresses that have been lowered and lowered over time. And then we find it. A RAM address in sync with the Starman timer. And when the RAM address goes to zero, the Starman runs out. We found our RAM address. 079F. Now let's go to the hex editor. 
we gotta go and find 079F. Now that we found our RAM address, we do exactly what we did in our first method of code making. We add a right breakpoint to 079F and it shows up in a debugger. Now we gotta go call up the Starman and see what portion of code overwrites that RAM address. And whatever it is, it starts at D818. The code looks to be 8D9F07. Contrary to the load accumulator opcode, 8D is the store accumulator opcode, with an absolute addressing mode. The store accumulator copies a value from the accumulator into a given RAM address. In this case, it's 079F. Now if there's a store accumulator, there should be a load accumulator not far before it. Loading the starting value, 23, into 079F. Oh, and what do you know, 23 was actually stored right before our code. The code being A923, or load accumulator, 23. Now if we want to edit the duration of the star, we gotta change this 23 to a big or a small number. Me? I'm gonna choose a small number because that would be funny if Mario's star duration would only last for like less than a second. Now we gotta do the old right click, create game gene code at this address, and replace that 23 with 01. Or another small number. And just as expected, the code works just fine. 